Hi guys, it's Katie, back with another edition of my vlog, and it's Sunday, so that means it's time for the Cinema Club Sunday Roundup, where I tell you what movies we watched this week, and you tell me what movies you watched this week down there in the comments. <laughs> Let's get right into it. At the very beginning of the week, Sean and I watched a movie by ourselves. It was one of those nights where the kids wanted to play video games after dinner instead of watching a movie all together, which is fine. Um, like I've said before, I have a huge list of stuff that's just for the grown-ups in the family. Um, so we decided to screen Gozu from 2003. That's a Takashi Miike movie. Um, it's about uh, some uh, Yakuza uh, who've done some wrong things uh, who then need to be driven down to a place to be um, executed. Uh, but on the way, uh, the one fellow who is instructed to drive the other fellow to his impending doom um, is the guy's brother. So uh, on the way, the guy who's supposed to get executed gets lost, and then the guy who's supposed to be delivering him to his fate um, tries to figure out what happened to his missing brother, and uh, it is a wild, wild adventure. Um, very weird, um, lots of ugh, body stuff. I don't want to reveal too much, but um, this one is definitely not for kids. Lots of weird sex stuff. Um, there's some really interesting breastfeeding and breast milk stuff um, that goes in uh, on this one. Um, and some just, mm, this is one of those ones you really can't say too much about it without giving away too many of the really, really, really amazing surprises in the movie. Um, so I'm just gonna say, if you've seen anything that Takashi Miike has done um, and you enjoy it, you will like this movie. If you are a weirdo who's into weird body stuff and weird Japanese storytelling, you will love this movie. Um, it's just great all around, but boy, if you are um, at all squeamish or, you know, again, watching with little kids who are gonna get all, Ugh! about sex stuff and body stuff um, like that, definitely don't watch this one. But uh, for everyone who thinks that they can handle that type of stuff, um, two thumbs way up on this one. Just, you know, every twist and turn, Sean and I were sitting there going, what? Oh my God. Whoa. Uh, it's so weird and amazing. And um, I'm just going to leave it at that. It's a, it's a weird review, but I don't, I don't want to reveal too much because, you know, um, it, yeah, I feel like it's better to go in cold. Um, no, I'm going to contradict myself. In the very next movie I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you a spoiler, but the next movie I'm going to talk about is Fast Five. So I feel like that's like a big, giant, humongous movie that most people have already seen, um, or if they were interested in seeing it, they would have already seen it. And the spoiler I'm going to say isn't that material of a thing, but... Um, Fast Five. It's the fifth Fast and the Furious movie. Um, I had only ever seen the original Fast and the Furious um, and none of the other movies in the franchise, but um, no, that's not true. I saw Too Fast, Too Furious, but Sean didn't see that one. Um, anyhow, I had wanted to introduce the kids to this franchise and I was wondering if we should start at the very beginning or what should we should do. And um, one of the places I get tips for movies to watch is actually on Reddit, on the movies subreddit, r slash movies. Um, and over and over again on r slash movies, Fast Five comes up not only recommended as the best movie in the Fast and the Furious series, but just an incredible action movie all by itself, standalone. You don't even need to watch the other movies in this series. So I thought, you know what? Let's have a stupid action movie night. Let's go for it. We'll watch Fast Five. So we did. It was incredible. Um, <laughs> better than I expected it to be. Um, there were some points at the beginning where I'm sure they were referring to the previous movies, but um, you know, this is a movie made for average intelligence Americans. It's not like you have to like, you know, study hard to understand what's going on. You're not really missing anything if you haven't seen the previous movies. Um, this one takes place in Rio. I, of course, joke to Sean uh, because this is also the first movie in the franchise that has Dwayne The Rock Johnson in it. They really missed a trick by not subtitling this movie Rock in Rio. Hello, but I guess that's probably a trademark phrase. Um, anyhow, uh, it's great. It's, you know, uh, some people who are expert drivers and car thieves going out there and doing their crazy convoluted action movie heist thing. Um, lots of great chase scenes, of course, lots of great driving scenes, lots of awesome cars. So if you're a car person, like I am, um, you're going to love it because it's just got a bunch of really cool driving in it. You know, that's the centerpiece of the movie. Everything else is just feeding into, let's have a cool car chase, right? Um, so the, uh, climactic car chase scene in the movie is, um, our heroes, the, uh, the, the furious gang, um, managed to rip a vault, a huge vault out. It's like the size of an elevator, right? Um, out of the wall of the place that they're attempting to rob using two 
2010 Dodge Chargers. They're both black. This is my car that I drive. Obviously the ones in the movie are like the super duper awesome version and they've souped them up and they have, you know, extra um, metal frameworks that they've attached to them so they don't rip the cars apart doing this move. But it is my car. And so when the kids saw the cars in the movie, they were like, hey mom, it's your car. Um, and so they take two of them and they drag this vault out of the wall. And then they proceed to have a chase scene where the two side-by-side -side chargers are driving down the street, dragging this incredibly heavy vault behind them and, uh, you know, going around corners and whipping the vault around and smashing it into other cars or smashing it through the front of a building. I mean, you really have to suspend your uh, disbelief here, you know, or understanding of the laws of physics at all. But it's that type of movie, right? It's a totally fun wild ride. You're there to watch an outrageous car chase scene and the movie delivers. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a great action movie that's about driving cars. I don't really need to say more than that about this movie. I will um, note that the next day, I always kind of like try to draw threads between movies since we're an unschooling family and like give my kids little pop quizzes about maybe things that we saw in the movie. And so um, when we woke up the next day, I said, so guys, where did that movie take place? And they said, oh, in Rio. And I said, okay, where's Rio? And James immediately said, Brazil. And I said, awesome. Good. I'm glad you know that. Now, is there like a um, a landmark or something that you saw in a couple of flyover shots that could tell you that it was in Rio? And Han Henry immediately answered, T-posing Jesus. So you're welcome. You can all think of Jesus up on the mountain in Rio as T-posing from now on. <laughs> um, surprisingly, I really like The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, um, in almost every movie he's in. He was my least favorite part of this movie. I don't know why, maybe because he was playing the antagonist for our guys, right? But uh, anyhow, really fun movie, recommended if you like stupid car chase based movies. Um, <laughs> the following night after we watched Fast Five, we followed that up with Logan Lucky, which came out in 2017. Um, another heist movie, another movie centered around driving and cars. Um, I would give Fast Five like a, maybe seven and a half or eight out of 10. I would give Logan Lucky nine and a half out of 10. Um, directed by Steven Soderbergh, who apparently came out of retirement to direct the movie because uh, he liked the script so much. Um, starring uh, Channing Tatum, Adam Driver, and Daniel Craig um, playing a hillbilly, which is pretty fun. Um, it's a fantastic heist movie about a group of hillbilly brothers who decide to rob a NASCAR race. Um, and their sister also. Uh, it's very family first message, which I always love um, in movies because I'm a very family first person. That's my outlook on life. Um, this one I don't want to say too much about because it would spoil some surprises. And you guys probably actually haven't seen this one because most people I've talked to haven't even heard of this movie. I think it just slid right by a bunch of people, but it's a really fun movie. Um, it's got a really charming story. The whole way that the heist works out in the story is pretty great. Um, and it also, I think, contributed to the um, mass popularity of um, the song Country Roads Take Me Home, which is like, it's, it's central in the movie, but like it really came back in popular imagination and became um, a meme because it was used in like three or four movies that all came out in 2017. And then also in the, uh, I think it was like the trailer for Fallout 76. Um, so anyhow, my kids somehow know this song, even though they had never heard John Denver in their life. They had never seen this movie. We were actually out at a restaurant uh, maybe a week ago, and um, a reggae cover of the song came on, and my oldest kid started singing along with it. And I was like, how do you know this song? And they were like, oh, we, we sing it on the bus at Trackers. And I was like, are the instructors teaching it to you? And he's like, no, the kids know it. And I was like, What? And then I remembered that it was in a plot point in a movie that I had recently watched and we Googled it and realized it was Logan Lucky, which was actually the movie I was trying to tell everyone that they needed to see. Um, so it was kind of a bizarre plate of shrimp moment that happened. Um, again, this was one of those movies that I saw by myself um, when Sean was in the hospital. Um, and then I wanted to revisit it with everyone just because I loved it so much. So um, if you like fast paced um, action movies, if you like heist movies, if you like um, heartwarming family first uh, stories. Give Logan Lucky a try. Um, I really loved it. Uh, second viewing was even better than first. So that, that, one, that one's a great one. Definitely recommended for everyone. Um, 
let's see, gotta look at my notes, sorry. Uh, the next night, um, we uh, did another one where it was just Sean and I watching a movie without the kids, and we watched this movie, Jinro the Wolf Brigade, which was an anime from 1999. Um, I had never heard of this, um, which is kind of surprising to me because I was a pretty big anime fan in the 80s and 90s, um, and I started to kind of lose track of stuff in the early 2000s when it just became like streaming was available and everybody suddenly could get their hands on more anime than you knew what to do with. Um, maybe I was feeling like too cool for school and suddenly since everyone could watch it, I wasn't paying as much attention anymore. I don't know. I feel like I was paying attention to what was coming out in 1999, but this one just went right past me. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty cool story. It's, uh, it's like a alternate history Japan after World War II. Uh, the main character that we're following is part of this like uh, elite uh, anti-terrorist tactical force, uh, but then he hooks up with someone who's maybe related to one of the terrorists. And um, there's a whole, uh, again, I don't want to say too much, but it's pretty cool because what they do is they make it into kind of a um, Little Red Riding Hood uh, allegory, right? So the uh, elite anti-terrorist cops are the wolves and these young girls who are working with the terrorists are like the Little Red Riding Hood characters. And so the Red Riding Hood story gets told over and over again inside of this um, anime, which is pretty cool. It's very violent. It's, I mean, it's about terrorists and anti-terrorist forces, right? Um, it looks like it's rotoscoped. It doesn't say, I actually looked up to see if it was, and it says it's all hand-drawn, but man, it looks rotoscoped to me. Um, it's beautiful. It's, uh, very well animated. Um, we enjoyed the story a lot. Again, I don't want to say too much about, um, how it progresses or ends, but if you are a fan of, um, I guess I'd say more serious anime, I would definitely check out Jinro, The Wolf Brigade. It's apparently actually the third movie in a series based on the same manga, uh, but the first two were done as live action. I've never heard of either the manga or these other movies, so I think I'm gonna check those out uh, because I really enjoyed this uh, anime. I think we found it on Netflix, but I'm not sure. You guys can look it up. Jinro, The Wolf Brigade is that one. Um, and then the last movie we watched this week, just to keep moving in the fairy tale theme, was we showed the kids Pan's Labyrinth, which was really, really fun. Um, that was the one that we watched last night. That one has been on my list to show the kids for a while. Um, 2006 release, directed by Guillermo del Toro. You guys have probably all seen it, but just in case there's someone out there watching my vlog who has not seen Pan's Labyrinth, please see Pan's Labyrinth. It's amazing. Um, it is a dark fantasy mixed with uh, sort of the horrors of wartime movie. Uh, it focuses on the, the young girl, Ophelia, who has to move in with her new stepfather, who she's never even met before, who's the captain of some forces that are fighting in Spain. Uh, I think it takes place in like 1944. Um, and she gets sucked into a whole fantasy world um, at, located at a labyrinth that is attached to his property that he lives at. But it, um, it's kind of more than that. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen um, the sort of main money shot uh, special effect things of the fawn in the movie and the uh, the guy who has no eyes, the slender man or whatever he's called, who's got the eyes in the palms of his hands and has to hold them up like this. Um, it held up incredibly well. I saw it in the theater when it first came out in 2006. Um, we watched it at home last night. It was great. All the special effects held up really well. Nothing looked too cheesy. Um, acting is incredible. The storytelling is incredible. Um, it's, it's just overall a great movie. Um, it is in Spanish and with subtitles, but I did read in my research that Del Toro actually did the translation and the subtitles himself because he wasn't satisfied with previous subtitle jobs on his um, other movies, which I think is very cool. Um, maybe a little control freaky, but I mean, it, he wanted it to be his way and uh, the subtitles are great. I mean, I don't speak Spanish that well, but um, they seem great to me and they flow really well. I don't feel like I'm um, watching someone else's interpretation of what he means to be saying there. Um, I did see some discussion um, recently in the media of like this idea that Americans won't read subtitles, which I keep coming across and it's just the weirdest idea to me because like unless you're dyslexic or illiterate, subtitles aren't that hard. It's not that hard to read some text on the screen and pay attention to what's going on on the screen. I mean, if it's a super technical um, and there's a lot happening on screen at once, it might get a little confusing, but I've never really understood this kind of idea of 
people who just won't watch movies that um, have subtitles. Uh, my kids have been watching movies with subtitles ever since they were able to read or read fast enough. Um, they were actually watching movies without subtitles before they could read and just trying to figure out what was going on in the movie by what they could see. Um, but uh, if, if you're for some reason one of these people that's like a little scared of subtitles or whatever, don't be. Um, they're not a problem. It takes a little getting used to, but they're not hard to read at all. So um, there's my pitch for reading subtitles. As you guys may have guessed, I really dig foreign films. Um, I'll watch a dub. I don't have a problem with that, but I prefer subtitled because you can hear the original um, language that it was you know, made in, and you can get all of the different sort of emotional cadences of those actors and what that language sounds like, which I think is important. So um, there's my pitch for subtitles again. <laughs> That's it for this week. It was kind of a short week. We had some uh, other things going on, so we didn't get to watch as many movies as we usually do. Next week, I'm really hoping to see um, Uncut Gems finally. It made it to the Academy Theater. So if I can finally carve out a hole in my schedule, Sean and I are going to go see that this week. Um, I did see they also have Ford v. Ferrari over there, and, you know, I copped to really liking car movies earlier in this vlog, so I'm going to try to see that one, but um, we'll see what I get out to see. Um, you'll have to tune in next week to find out if I actually get to see Uncut Gems or not. Um, until then, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be back in two days with another edition of my vlog.